Hello and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought-ish Shipyard Champions. Today's challenge is by Polywhirl. Uh, challenge the pre uh, dread the pre dread. The year is 1905 and your country is at war with the British. They've sent their newest ship, the Dreadnought-ish, <laughs> out alone to raid your country's commerce. Thankfully, though, your country has one of their newest battleships out escorting the transports that have been targeted. Take down this new vessel and protect the transports. Your forces, any nation beside the British, year 1904, uh, one battleship, pre-dreadnought, ten transports. Uh, you may not use the French Experimental, American Experimental 1, American Experimental 3, American Experimental 4, or the Italian Fast Semi-Dreadnought Hulls. Okay. Enemy forces in Britain, 1905, one uh, battleship, which will be the Dreadnought-ish shared assigned ship. Starting condition, uh, whether any, time, any, range, 10 kilometers only. Okay. 10 kilometers. And I'm in 1904. British, 1905. And how many transports were there? 10. And I get points for each that survives. 10 kilometer starting range, that's pretty close. But then again, I am uh, I am driving a pre-dreadnought, so uh, maybe that's not such a bad thing. So I'm going with Japanese, because in a previous uh, previous episode of uh, Shipyard Champions, I found that this hull can in fact be made to something uh, almost resembling a dreadnought. Let's see. It was not on the uh, on the list, no? No. It's not mentioned. That means I can use it. Uh, 18 knots should probably be okay. Let's place down a front tower and a secondary tower and a couple of funnels. There we go. Plenty of range, even at minimum. Mark 2, Mark 2, Mark 3 11s. So that's an option. That is an option. Maybe I'm gonna go with 11 inch guns. instead of 12s. Oh, I might even be able to fit... no. Not that many of them. Maybe, maybe if I do a little bit of uh, tinkering here and there. Can I move this even further? It would be nice. I don't think I have barbettes for it. Not in 1905. But it would be nice if I could uh, make some kind of super firing uh, setup for it. There we go. By golly, I think this might work. There, that should be, uh, yeah, they are, like, mirrored. There we go. That is my 11-inch setup. 
engine efficiency took a little bit of a hit, but it's not too bad. If nothing else... Is it possible to stack more than... no. I think two of those is just my best bet for uh, for funnels. And here's a little bit of a uh, an exploit that you can use. These tiny uh, square barbettes can almost always be used. Mark two six inch. Everything is Mark two. Haha, <laughs> yes. There we go. That is the basic setup. I might have to reduce some things to uh, not be overweight. There's just not that much I can uh, I can choose from though. There we go. Engine efficiency is now good. Now that I picked an engine. Crop 2, Barbet 3, I don't think I'm gonna get my flash fire tunnels down to very uh, very low, I think it's gonna remain bad. Let's see, standard ratio, standard ratio, capped AP. What kind of pen are we looking at here now? Not the greatest. Mmm. 16% flash fire chance. That is probably as good as it's gonna get. I want to reduce my ammo, uh, amount actually and go to heavy shells. I'm just fighting a single ship. I don't think running out of ammo is gonna be uh, what uh, what kills me. Let's see, we got 15 inches of armor on the uh, on the turrets. I guess that's okay. The Dreadnought-ish I'm guessing has 12 inch guns, being the dreadnought ish. 13.7 main belt. I guess that works. I'm gonna go 13.7 fore and aft also. And I have to find somewhere uh, to reduce. Let's actually uh, let's drop the secondary guns. Don't think they're going to be needed. Let's go 14 on the turret tops, uh, two, uh, on the sides, and 2.5 on the top. And 37 caliber. Let's see, at 10,000 meters, 3.5% accuracy. Four point three percent. That is actually better. So yeah, let's keep them at forty caliber length. Mm, yeah, we are now overweight. That kind of sucks, but you know what? We're gonna remove. Two of the wing turrets and keep it like this. Okay, 832 tons overweight. That's not great, but it just is what it is, I guess. Uh, I can reduce the fore and aft belts a little bit. 
Let's go 11. That's better. Not perfect, but better. 166 tons overweight. And also a four weight offset. I can't really move the funnels any further back though. I can move this turret a little bit further back. Wait. That makes my ship heavy heavier if I move it back. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. And probably because the weight modifier for the main belt is different than for the, uh, the fore belt. Okay. If I move these back though. Uh, that lessened my four weight offset, but it also gave these guns worse uh, gun arcs. So I think I'm just gonna ignore the four weight offset and find somewhere uh, um, a different way to uh, reduce my little uh, overweight problem. High capacity, no. Nose fuse? I think nose fuse is actually the way to go here. At 10,000 meters, I got 13.2 inches of belt penetration. Not sure if that's going to be enough. But I don't think the Dreadnought ish has a lot more armor than this. I might need to close into. Uh, um, let's see. 5,000? 15.2 inches of pen? Maybe. Let's see, these funnels weigh 288 tons. can save some weight by going to this. That's a hundred tons saved. Now I need to uh, place these differently because these funnels are uh, a little bit fat. Oh, only 11. there. 50 tons overweight. Uh, I think I can reduce that weight by... I'll oh, see there, almost. There we go. A little bit light on the inner belts, but that is okay. See, we got a resistance of 70. That's not great. We only get a plus 42 for slope design to increase the ricochet chance. And minus 14% gun damage. Also not great. But we also have... Where is... Um, Let's see, where it says beam and uh, draft. There. Minus 20% for the increased beam, gun damage. Also plus base accuracy. 
Uh, but we do lose base accuracy for the draft, but the draft also gives us uh, minus 15% gun damage. So it should make the ship a little bit more survivable. If only a little bit. So yeah, I think uh, I think we're ready to take on the dreadnought ish. Also, just uh, reading through the points, uh, the scoring here. Ten points for every transport that survives. Fifty points for sinking the dreadnought ish. 50 points if your ship has green level of health. Uh, 30 points if your ship has yellow health. And 10 if it has red health. That is the light, medium and heavy damage thing uh, in, the, in the result screen. 20 points if you have the smallest ship. 20 points if you have the fastest ship. 20 points if you have the biggest ship. Or 20 points if I have the smallest ship. So it's gonna be either of those two. <laughs> That's kind of weird, but okay. And 40 points if I have the cheapest ship. I don't know. Let's see. Twelve point six kilometer actually. And the enemy has not spotted my transports, because transports are very hard to spot. We are playing vanilla, by the way, because we are fighting a, uh, a shared assign. My 11-inch guns are already scoring, uh, scoring some hits. Drawing the enemy away from the transports. Just this plan. Oh, we're scoring flooding hits. That's good. That means uh, we can uh, we can hurt it at this range. So let's not get too close here. Also a little bit limited in um, what kind of angles I can fight at with my uh, battle hexagon kind of turret layout with the wing turrets. Destroy the main gun. Let's take a look at the dreadnought edge, by the way. That is indeed a uh, a dreadnought edge. Fine. Transports are seemingly okay. It's not been identified yet, but I guess we're gonna find out soon if I have the smallest or the biggest or the cheapest or the most expensive ship. Dreadnought-ish. Mine is the biggest. 21,000 tons versus 17,000 tons. 295 million. Okay, mine is also the most expensive ship. 438 million. That's an expensive pre-dreadnought. They got 11 inches of main belt armor at a 100% quality. It's uh, it's the 4 belt I've gone through, which is 4 inches thick. I got a white powder, picric acid 2. That could be explosive. It 
destroyed another main gun. They got 12 inch Mark II's. Firepower has been cut in half, basically, with two main gun turrets out. There you go, I took a hit. Main tower. It's not serious. At nine kilometers, I can pen. I should be able to pen their uh, main belt at this range. And it looks like I am. Oof, yeah. Let's keep my ship health in the green. And there she goes, that's the Dreadnought-ish. Well done by Akagi. That is certainly green health. Barely even took any damage. And the Dreadnought-ish is gone. Let's tally up the points. So all my transports survived. I was kind of lucky in that the... Uh, the Akagi was able to bait the Dreadnought-ish away from the convoy. So that's 100 points. That's 50 points for sinking the Dreadnought-ish. And another 50 for uh, having green level of health on my ship. So that's 200 points. Um, did I have the fastest ship? I don't think so. I forget what speed the Dreadnought-ish was uh, moving at, uh, I guess I can... Uh, 21 knots. I did not have the fastest ship. But I did have the biggest ship. That's 220 points. So yeah, that's 220 points. And no, definitely not the cheapest ship. So, in terms of points, I probably didn't win this challenge. But you know what? We can uh, we can rebuild this. Now my official score is two hundred and twenty points. But let's see if I can uh, if I can improve upon that. First of all, I want to make this cheaper. The Dreadnought-ish clocked in at 290 million, thereabouts. Excuse me. Also, I need to have the fastest ship, because that's also uh, a points thing. 407 million? What the... If I, uh, if I go with cadets... How... Mm. Let's see, I've already identified the uh, the Dreadnought, so I'm just going to check. 295 million, yeah. Crew is very expensive. There we go. Now, <laughs> I have the cheapest ship. Not by much, but by a little bit. Now I just need to uh, make this not overweight. Cramped quarters. That's gonna help. And I can up the crew training a little bit. 
There we go, 294. Actually, let's... Uh, 21.1 knots. Technically, it is now the fastest ship. <laughs> if only by a tiny little bit. Anti-torp. I don't think we need anti-torp. Now, armor. Armor-wise. I think we can reduce the armor a little bit more. Eight on the four and aft belts. Deck armor probably doesn't need to be that thick. There we go. That saved a lot of weight. 261 million. So I can increase the crew training up until we get 294. 294.9. There we go. Let's see if it's now possible with my ship shrunken down a little bit. And made a lot cheaper. It's not even a worse ship, really. Maybe not as tanky, but it's actually a little bit faster. So uh, let's go. Let's go again. Uh, convoy is heading. Uh, which way? Heading away. That's good. Okay, Akagi. Let's do it again. We've done it before. We can do it again. Go down to cruising speed. quite as stable as we were when the ship was uh, fattened up. Although I think the, uh, the increase in uh, beam and draft probably cancelled each other out as far as accuracy modifiers go. There we go, first hit is scored. Did the Dreadnought ish have torpedoes? I think it did, yeah, five kilometer torps. I removed my anti torpedo blister to save some weight. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference, but anti torpedo blisters do make the ship. A little bit more uh, more tanky. It adds resistance. Nine kilometers away. That's a big penetration. Yeah, we can pen that belt at this range. She had eleven inches, I think. being picked apart. The Dreadnought-ish. Oh yeah. I think we got her with that one. She got some pretty big 12 inch guns that, no, actually, no, they cannot go through my main belt unless I get to like 5,000 meters. Uh, she still has all her main guns though. Last time we uh, took out many of them.
I should have just gone with this ship to begin with and scored some more points. Again, the main tower took a little bit of damage. And we've lost two crew members. bit more. Oh, flash fire. That's not good. That's the uh, A turret taken out. I think we're still in the green. What was the main belt pen we took? Eight kilometers. Didn't think she'd be able to pen me at that much. Stop punching holes in my ship. I don't think we're uh, green anymore. Oh, things were going so well. And then suddenly the dreadnought ish started actually hitting. I'm lucky the flash fire didn't spread. Got an AP range of 23 kilometers. So I can actually outrange the dreadnought ish. got coincidence 2, I've got coincidence 1. That's one of the wing turrets taken out. I'm just gonna turn the other cheek. And be back to having uh, six guns firing. Penetrating hit. Let's see. Do I want to take the uh, the dreadnought ish on the uh, on the thumbnail? Maybe. Maybe like that. Or just take it from the uh, from the ship designer. I think I will do that. Just because videos with uh, with ship designer thumbnails tend to get more views. I don't know why, but I guess that's just what people uh, like seeing. Uh, 
the um, the aft turret is running a little bit low on AP. Although she has a ma had a main uh, main magazine shared with the uh, with the A turret that got blown up. Dreadnought is is flooding quite badly, which means I think we can just close in, and they will not be able to fire back due to the angle. Uh, but no, nope, that's not needed. Dreadnought ish goes down for a second time, and no health was still green, so that would have been that would have been. Uh, that would have been uh, 200 points for sinking the ship, green health, surviving transports, and so forth. Uh, 20 points for the biggest ship, still, so 220. 240, because I also had the fastest ship by 0.1 knots. <laughs> and 40 points, so 280 because I also get 40 points for having a ship that was uh, like 10 bucks cheaper than the Dreadnought-ish. So... <laughs> but of course, this uh, second attempt was made in hindsight, knowing the exact cost of the Dreadnought-ish and the exact speed. I thought I would still have had the cheapest ship uh, in the first attempt, just from the fact that the, uh, uh, the pre-Dreadnought I was building was a pre dreadnought, and I just assumed it would uh, not reach the cost of uh, of the actual dreadnought, but it did by almost twice. But I'm guessing the uh, uh, the crew training added a lot to that. So that was uh, that was this week's. Shipyard Champions. I hope you enjoyed it. And take a look in the description below. Oh, wing turrets hanging off the side, but that's what happens when you don't make your ship fat. But hey, if they fit, they sit. So check out the uh, description below for links to all the other admirals and their attempts at this challenge. Goodbye, and take care.